welcome everyone students of msc wildlife studies of kvasu let me introduce myself i am dr joe skellarakel retired scientist g from the kerala forest research institute at pg i have been teaching this course ever since KVASU started the MSc Wildlife Studies. Let us first see the syllabus for your course. As you know, the syllabus for climatology and climate change is given very much in detail, but at the same time you can see that you have only one credit for it. So we will be first uh, starting with the theoretical aspects of climatology and climate change especially we will be talking about much about weather and climate the classification of different types of climates and all these things then the importance of climate change on survival of life on earth so we will be looking into the details of climate change especially the scientific science behind climate change and how the forestry and uh, wildlife are going to be affected by it and then classification of climatic regions wild animal adaptation to climate variation and climate change influence of climate on wild animal behavior and influence of climate on wild animal reproduction climate change and factors influencing climate change then effects of climate change on wildlife and measures to control climate change especially we will be looking at the adaptation and mitigation measures suggested by the united nations and the various international conventions associated with it then the principles and methods used in the prediction of climate change then measures to help free ranging wildlife survive climate change and then also for the captive wildlife and need for assisted colonization and finally we will be concluding the climate change with where are we going with regard to climate change what are the changes that we have to make in our life or what are the activities that we have to perform change in the lifestyle all these things that is all about the syllabus thank you good morning everyone in this first class what i am going to tell you is about weather and climate as you would know in your syllabus we are expected to make a study of climate change and its impact on wildlife but before doing that it is important to know what is weather what is climate the differences between the two the definitions of weather and climate so in this first class what i am going to tell you is about the weather and how do you distinguish it with the climate okay okay let us now look at some of the definitions so first how do you define climate climate is defined as the average weather patterns existing throughout several years over a large portion of earth surface so actually the average weather patterns existing over several years that is exactly climate now look at what is uh, the uh, the next one that is usually climate is measured for a specific area or region based on weather patterns over a 30 to 35 time period so weather patterns you measure for 30 to 35 years and then you arrive at the climate of that area for example if you want to know the what is climate of wayanad you should have a measurement for at least 30 to 35 years of the weather parameters like temperature the humidity the wind velocity the rainfall of the area 
all these things they constitute together the climate okay next is climate therefore varies from weather because weather is concerned only with short term events so that is the main difference so what you are recording today say for example today is rainy we cannot say the climate is rainy we say that the weather is rainy today or we say that today the temperature is very high okay so the next simple way to remember the distinction between the two is climate is what you expect but weather is what you get so you are expecting a climate for example in wayanad today you are expecting a very cool weather but unfortunately you are getting a very hot weather that means that this uh, climate you are expecting a cool weather as that is that is the usual climate of wayanad that should be expected but what you are getting is a hot weather so it is not a hot climate it is only a hot weather i hope you have understood the difference between the two now once again let us remember the saying climate is what you expect but weather is what you get okay now we look at the different components of weather there are a number of parameters that you have to measure to understand the weather like temperature humidity rainfall wind direction and velocity solar radiation barometric pressure etc etc so these are all weather parameters that are usually measured in a weather station now coming to the components of climate it is the long term averages of temperature humidity rainfall wind direction and velocity solar radiation barometric pressure etc so it is the the difference is that the in weather you measure the day to day uh parameters whereas in climate you express the uh long term averages of these parameters plus in climate there is one more thing that is atmosphere oceans land masses and topography ice and biosphere and various other features of the earth are involved in climate okay in the last slide i was referring to you about some additional features of climate like a topography atmosphere and all those things now what exactly is that now look at the picture of the map that is being shown here showing the mountain ranges in india here you can see that uh, although india the 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 topography of india varies from a very low latitude to a very high latitude you find that there are a large number of mountain ranges in the country and you experience a very different type of weather and therefore a different type of climate because of the various vegetational features because of the elevation of the place and various other topographical features now an example that you take from kerala here you can see that the anamudi which is uh, around 2695 meters elevation which is the highest mountain peak in the western ghats and in this particular peak area you experience a very different climate because of the elevation and also you can see that the vegetation is very different from rest of the western ghats you have the shola forest there so this shola forest or the vegetation of that particular place is very much related to the climate that is being experienced because of the various geographical and other topographical features so this is exactly climate that climate 
need not be very same in different locations of a particular geographical area it could vary depending upon many other features of topography elevation and various other aspects okay the next question is when did we start recording the weather data or the climatic data it's a very difficult question to answer because there could be many answers in fact the thermometer was invented somewhere in 1714 and after that there were recording of temperatures and even before that it seems the japanese used to record the weather or the climatic pattern that was existing in different years connected to growing different type of trees and all that but in general it is agreed that the regular recording of weather data is available since 1854 that is actually the establishment of a weather station and uh, weather department in uh, in england okay but uh, some people say that the weather real weather recording started in only 1880 and some say it is started only in 1914 so all these answers are there anyway we know that the weather recording is not more than 150 years old that means the real good weather data that is using the various instruments is not more than 100 or 150 years old then balloon measurements are available since 1950s only that is the upper atmosphere we have started studying only since 1950s now the very great advancement that has been made in the recent years is uh, weather data using satellite satellites were actually kept on the atmosphere since 1978 to record the weather so we get several kinds of weather data since 1978 and now it is a very well developed science we get very sophisticated weather data from different parts of the earth that is uh, using the satellite now what are the commonly used instruments this is not satellite or anything but commonly used instruments that we regularly use for weather data measurements are thermometer for example for temperature hygrometer for humidity rain gauge for rainfall measurements and radio meters for solar radiation and anemometer for wind velocity and wind vane for wind direction and barometer for atmospheric pressure and there could be so many different other types of measurement uh, devices which are used depending upon your requirement but these are some of the very common instruments that you find in a very common weather station okay now we'll we will come into another branch of climatology that is paleoclimatology which is actually inferring the climate of the historical past now what exactly is this because uh, we would like to know the climate of the past especially when we are now looking at climate change how do we say that the climate has changed naturally it should have changed from the past to the present or in other words 3 or 4 centuries or a few centuries ago we were experiencing a climate which was much different from the climate of today but we cannot go back into the history and then record the temperature of those centuries or the humidity of those centuries or any other parameters like that so in paleoclimatology what they are trying to do is that they are making proxy measurements to record temperature and various other parameters if possible now what are these proxy measurements 
they are not the real measurements but we are inferring or we are trying to uh, infer the weather condition or climatic conditions of some historical past maybe several centuries ago okay now what are the methods quantities quantification uh, quant the, the quantity such as tree ring width what is uh, i will explain some of these things now just uh, have an idea what exactly is it quantity such as tree ring width coral growth isotope variations in ice cores ocean and lake sediments cave deposits fossils ice cores bore holes temperatures and glacier length records are correlated with climatic fluctuations i will explain in detail some of these things in the in the next few slides then the proxy temperature reconstructions of the last 2000 years have been performed for the northern hemisphere and over shorter time scale for the southern hemisphere and tropics so you should know that this science is now very well developed with a lot of new technologies coming so proxy temperature reconstructions for the past 2000 years are now available and with these studies scientists have found that earth has experienced various periods of stable climate patterns as well as periods of climate change so exactly speaking it is paleo climatology which has shown us the way or given us the clue that a very serious climate change has occurred from the past so this is a branch which is very uh, well developed now and a lot of uh, investigations are going on into the climate of the past in the last slide i have mentioned that paleo climatology in paleo climatology they determine the past climate through proxy measurements one of those proxy measurements is from tree rings now this has developed into a new branch of climatology called dendroclimatology dendro in greek means tree actually it is the science of understanding the climate variation of the past from tree rings as most of you know if you cut across a tree you will find the annual rings which are actually formed during the different seasons of the year and those which are formed during the spring season are almost white in color and those which are formed during the uh, unfavorable season mostly during the summer time they are dark in color so the rings are actually differentiated in a tree and you can see it very clearly in a cross section of a tree now if you examine this cross section of the tree you can easily say that it is uh, how many years old if you count the number of rings and that has developed into another science called dendrochronology whereas in dendroclimatology what they try to do is that they are trying to understand what was the climate in that particular year so just examining the various anatomical aspects of this tree rings you can say whether it was a very hot year or whether it was a very rainy year or whether it was a year with very cold temperature all these things can be deduced from the annual rings and this is actually called dendro climatology and this is actually a very important part of the climatological sciences nowadays because many past climate events have been uh, understood from tree rings okay okay this is another example of 
paleoclimatology. You can see the coral reefs and uh, you should know that they are thousands of years old and how they develop due to the calcareous deposits which are being built up on them every year. So if you examine them in detail you will find layers after layers of calcareous deposits and you can calculate the age of some of these coral reefs and thereby you can also have a clue with regard to the past climate. Okay. Now this is yet again another example for paleoclimatology. In Antarctica you find that it is all covered by ice sheets and these ice sheets are deposited year after year and some years the temperature may be less compared to some other years so the ice deposit may be less and uh, what the scientists who are analyzing this kind of things they do is that they will dig core they will they will take out a core of ice as seen in the picture and these layers can be marked on them and they take that ice and they can do carbon they can they can do the carbon dating of these materials and they can say how many years old some of these water molecules are and with regard to the layers and their various characteristics they can have a clue on the climate of those years. Okay, here is another example for the study of paleoclimatology. They are the caves. In the four pictures you can see that uh, these are pictures of a cave in uh, Germany in a place called Potenstein. And uh, this type of caves are available in many European countries and more especially in Germany and uh, Slovenia etc. In this first picture that you see, you can see it is the entrance to the caves which is very much restricted and inside it is almost uh, more than a kilometer long. And you can see certain formations. These are formations which are very natural and not man-made. And you as walk as you walk inside the cave you can see it all around you. They are actually formed by some calcareous deposits which are happening every year, year after year. And these formations are coming like this. And some of them are in the form of salutus and some of them are erect like uh, the one you see in the third photograph almost like a building or a statue that is erected. So if you examine the sections of these salutus or these statues you can see that they are the result of deposition of calcareous substances over centuries and they can be subjected to dating and you can see in which which part of the century the climate was very uh, uh, d um, different from the other one or the, a lot of distinction can be built around this with regard to climate and that is how the paleoclimatology is studied from the caves also. Okay, in this particular slide what I would like to show you is an example of uh, what can be achieved with the help of paleoclimatological studies. For example, look at this particular graph. On the x-axis of this particular graph you can see the years marked from year 1000 to 2000 and almost uh, the graph is reproduced up to 2004 and on the y-axis you can see the temperature anomaly that is that is uh, the temperature varying from the normal case so you can see a number of curves being drawn and that is by different scientists and here you can see that the studies are done with the help of various, I mean using various methods like the corals, the tree rings, the caves, all these things and the Antarctic ice cores, all these uh, different methods and they have arrived at these particular curves, curves. 
and you can see that there are a lot of variation but at the same time there is a lot of uniformity also and you can see that one interesting part is that from the year 1850 or so there is definitely an increase in temperature up to the year 2004 you can see it is an old graph it is not up to 2020 but up to 2004 only but definitely you can see that if you look at that particular curves you can see that there is definitely an increase in temperature from the normal when compared to the previous centuries and that is why the climate I mean many scientists argue that there is certainly a climate change that is happening in our this thing and this uh, uh, graph has been reproduced from the IPCC report that is the uh, intergovernmental panel on climate change that is IPCC okay this is another graph but uh, here on the x-axis the year is from somewhere from 1850 to 2010 or something like that and the temperature anomaly is again recorded and here again you can see that the difference is that it is not from paleoclimatology it is from an instrumental record that is thermometer has been used to measure temperature and you find definitely after the 1850 there is an increasing temperature and this is the uh, these are the five year averages and annual averages and you can see definitely the graph is climbing as we advance towards year 2000 then it is also possible to infer the climate from human historical periods for example there are reports of frost fairs on the Thames in England then records of good and bad harvests I think even the farmers in many countries they keep a record of that then dates of spring blossom or lambing that is uh, many I mean especially in temperate countries the blossoms come in spring and there are years when uh, the spring is a bit early or a bit late and so they record it then extraordinary falls of rain and snow many records are available and unusual floods or droughts then phenological records what is phenological records just like the flowering and fruiting of trees or the leaf shedding of the trees and also the migration of birds if you come into the wildlife so but uh, uh, but you should know that uh, all are qualitative compared to natural proxies which we have derived from paleoclimatology but at the same time these are very important in determining how the climate has been changing during the past so many years this is actually a, a painting of the frost fair on the river Thames in London many many years ago this must have happened and you can see that they are all standing on the river the river has frosted and probably they are celebrating that one so this is something of a very historical record of the climate uh, in this picture you can see that uh, this is actually the uh, the the place where uh, Shivaratri is celebrated in Kerala in Alve and the Alva Manapuram and this is a photograph from the year 2013 on Shivaratri day the Shivaratri celebrations could not be held because it was all flooded so this has, record, this has been recorded in our history and this is an example to show you how the historical records can be also uh, used to derive the climate of an area another one that is uh, in November 2015 Chennai city was badly flooded and you can see the beach and the city and people are struggling and uh, you can see when an airplane floating on the water so this is again a part of the historical data of climate you can see that this is another example from northern India the Kedarnath temple 
is pictured amid the damaged surroundings by flood waters at Rudra Prayag in the Himalayan state of Uttarakhand in June 25 2013 I am sure that you will all remember this event that is the Kerala floods of August 2018 we had a very bad flooding affecting almost every nook and corner of Kerala and it creating a lot of damage and it lasted for almost a couple of weeks and the after effects were there for several more months and even today and you can see that this has gone into the history of kerala because we had such a flood in 2 in 1924 only and after that this is the worst flood that this but our state has be, has experienced uh, in our recorded history so these are all the important things that we have to remember while studying the climate uh, that the climate and weather we have studied and uh, then we have seen uh, how the paleo climatology has uh, uh, helped us to know the climate of the past uh, several centuries and then historical records thank you